in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the higher you rise in God and in life, you will see how much God does not need you. The higher you rise, you will learn that it is a privilege to be part of God's program. I am being aware every day that God can do without me. It's, it's, not, it's not a motivation, it's the truth. I now understand why David said, what is man? What is man? If you can make a donkey speak, why should man be the one speaking for you? What is man that thou art mindful of? As you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life, you will get to a point where you will know, I didn't pray for this. This one is not fasting. This one didn't come by study. How it came, I don't understand. And you just say, Lord, let, let, let your name be glorified. Jesus, you be lifted in our lives where we become embarrassed to let men know that God is still the doer when you are starting it's obvious because you don't have any notable results it's easy to say it is God but a time comes when men say you are the doer and you will first say I'm not the doer but later on you will be tempted to 
say but come to think of it is it not my power and the might of my hand that is the foolishness that can throw a man from any height it took a king and turned a king into a beast that whoever can be stupid enough to roll before God you will never roll before men I tell you this that you can lose your dignity before God to say Lord I am nothing oh it's not you are not condemning yourself it's a recognition I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before help me I cast my crown before the highest, the highest royalty. I am mountain before. I am mountain before. Yes, Majesty. Because the King of Kings, King of Kings. said my peace I give you there are many things in the Bible that God gave man without his request one of it is his peace he said this type of peace the world cannot give it I speak peace to every heaviness peace to every worry peace to every stress in the name of Jesus I speak peace to every storm in your life I want you to know that God is alive and God is in control. Peace to your spirit. Let every heaviness, let every depression give way. The peace of the Lord garrisons your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Sometimes we just get lost in worship. These extended moments of worship are very, very powerful because many things happen in worship i was preparing to minister a program it was a worship program and while i was meditating the lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box 
you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of god my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the lord be glorified in jesus name and we thank god for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of jesus the lord put what i'm about to teach you in my heart since last month I was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us. Everyone's, and again, the Spirit of the Lord, Pastor Shago, it's good to see you again. God bless you. Thank you. Everyone's, and again, the Lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress. You see, believers are likened to a house that is being built. The Bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house. And it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well, but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented. Are we together? So God would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of Jesus is not yet established and he will build us up. This is why it is powerful to walk with the Holy Spirit. If you really walk with the Holy Spirit, your life will be complete and balanced. If you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate one of the things about dominion i've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations i've been talking about it that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom we need to understand that that's not what I'm talking about but that if the saints remember the Bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then it says by them we reign in life it is God's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of god's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now?
so it matters to God that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and we'll continue to strive to make this happen in the name of Jesus and I've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exert sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence i've taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty it's called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like Ruth told Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay I'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, their inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands he was interpreting the dream of nebuchadnezzar the head of gold the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that that were representations of many kingdoms that will come and then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone 
became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and Jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says I am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief cornerstone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the Bible said it the king had the dream and Daniel interpreted it and it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ so we need influence we need a lot of it one of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion I'm just giving us the foundation so when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, I can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment God's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when I talk of wealth, I'm not talking of just cars and houses. That's, 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 that's not wealth. That's just maybe a level of comfort. But that, that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be open. Are we together now? These are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um 
school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the lord please listen to me the bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men I hope you know men are arrogant it's what God has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say Lord I need you how many times have people ignored God in the Bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with God is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the Holy Spirit is telling you there is a way I can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the Lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by Satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is God one of the things you must lose is everything God gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and Satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men. While they clap for you for getting A and B, you have lost the things that really matter. And after decades of moving in ignorance, you would turn back and find out you really didn't have anything. You were better off before you started following that path. Are we together now? Our world is full of very angry people. Look at the young people who are angry right now. They turn back and look at their lives. No money, no joy, no peace. You have children as if you should kill them. Are we together now? Because you don't know what to do with them. The needs are much. They bring PTA letter and you are angry. You have a church. You don't even know what to do. It's not growing. You go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it. This church must grow. And you try it and nothing happens. And you give your best and the members lash back at you. And you turn and say, God, did you design this thing? And God said, I have no hand in this. Because Jesus said, I am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know 
we, we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree. Are we together now? So usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say, look, this way you are following is wrong. Let me tell you this. I, I say this with all humility. I have watched people take steps and I already knew where they were going to end. It's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it. I have seen people take steps and make choices that I know the end of it is going to be disaster. Except the mercy of God intercepts somewhere in the way. They are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully. Now this sounds like pride, you see. I've been saying this thing for many years. I didn't just start saying it. This system will never allow you to serve God. It's a promise I'm giving you. You follow this system, the world's way of doing things. You will never live a meaningful life. Have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide? Someone would just hang himself and write a letter. I hate life. I was reading um, the, the online paper just today about a woman, I think somewhere in Nigeria, who killed her husband, killed the children, and killed herself. That's the way. High blood pressure used to be sickness for old people. But now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what, <coughs> excuse me, what they are thinking about. That's life for you. And Satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure, number one, that you never have time for God. I hope you know that the number one attack of Satan is your spiritual life. Listen to me carefully. In that order, when Satan begins to launch an attack, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Ultimately, because if you can cut your ears away from the voice of God, that's the supply of your life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And if that word is cut away from you, you have started dying, even though alive. Every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life. So the Bible says we should be steadfast, immovable, are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in God to say God I'm disappointed in you I will try another strategy I, I, I trusted you to do A and B in my life you have come to a point where your love for God is as solid as Mount Zion Many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day, every time, per second, per second. Satan uses all the elements in this life. Poverty, pain, offense, disappointment. Are we together? Delay, all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life. And goodness, is he getting at people? Rubbishing people so much. You see everyone, I'm trying to make ends meet. Um, it's time for prayer. Prayer what? Please, God is here. Let's, let's, let's do this thing first. And we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest. There remained a Sabbath for the people of God. But until you walk with the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men can find rest in experience. Do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated. No. My life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. If you are poor today, it's not a reflection of God's inability to bless. If you are not influential today, it's not a reflection of God's limitation. Are we together? If you are not anointed to a notable dimension, it's not a reflection of God's inability to reach you. There is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly. That's why we are here. 
to learn to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is God speaking to someone already and so I just want to press on an issue with us that I think God would have me talk to us on tonight um, so that we can have the time to serve God I title it it's a very brief message my cup runneth over I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven I pray pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray I want us to spend a few minutes praying the greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on Sunday churches will be empty a time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying look I, I have four jobs because I'm trying to make ends meet I my my child school fees has been increased to uh, by times five and I have to make sure ends meet God please wait when I make it I can come to you and if you disturb me I'll come with a seed and sow it to you Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we're dealing with tonight thou preparest a table not a sword thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies here is the miracle thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over may that be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones i believe that the greatest attack on the body of christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity, listen carefully, to be able to spend our lives by spending our time serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. 
that our lives are time dependent and whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to and so satan knowing the value of time has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack. It's a fight for time. Satan is targeting your time, not your pocket. He's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life where God is not prioritized, he has captured you. The time of the average believer is spent worrying, is spent thinking of needs here and there. And I want to tell you categorically, it is not the will of God. You will never be able to serve the purposes of God that way. As a man of God, it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon, well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns. Where will we get the fuel for the generator? Where are we going to rent the keyboard? Many people lie as if it doesn't matter. It does matter. When your landlord comes knocking at your door, you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life. Are we together now? That says, and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern, you lost appetite? Has that happened to someone? That you sat down, you are not sick or you are fine, but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying. You wake up in the night and you are stressed out. Are you not seeing that death is killing us? Give us Psalm 112. This is God's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies it says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, The generation of the upright. That means that the impact of that man transcends a generation. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be where? Please talk to me, believers. That wealth and riches shall be in his house. And in spite of that wealth and riches, his righteousness endures. Now, this is what you cannot get with Satan. If you ever get wealth and riches this way, your righteousness will not endure. Because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things. That by the time you are 10 years in that voyage, you have lost so many things. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And in spite of it, his righteousness endures. The Bible says that man is blessed. He fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. His seed, his seed, there is not just his children. Your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And then he says, his righteousness endures forever. I have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God. 
are we together now uh, i've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom wealth riches and abundance is that number one most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective is is from a standpoint of lust so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor god it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lost but that's not the way of god number two is that there is as i will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated the economic system of the kingdom and they give the best that they can communicate and then you find out largely that from many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of god and then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce god to become energy and just reduces god to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you have been evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results. Get results first, then you can say, oh, you are wrong, I discovered another route. This teaching is a symbol of God's mercy because there is a tsunami coming. It has started. It's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it. And it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women eat their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach. 
I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach. It's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom. I will never serve the Lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space I give God. I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and god so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace, on your skill, on whatever it is that you represent. Now, most believers will frown at what I'm saying. That's why they are poor. That's why they struggle. We pray, and that's very important. We study the word. We are faithful in church, but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship. Many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency, value. 
in the area where value plays, nothing will cover for it. Are we together now? So your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness. And I've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward. It is not just because people are pursuing you. The quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you. If a president needs you, you will be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president. Is that true? Yes. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God. The ever present help in time of need. You are my God. Do you know that when you become valuable you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable pegged at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored Pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential. That you rise to a point where not gender, not geographic limitations, cultural barriers, etc. That none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you. That's value. Value is not that you have something that is, is being biased by loyalty. So I have something that only my tribes people patronize. And they are only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that. And they, oh, you are from this state. And okay, let's come and buy this. No, when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life, where regardless of what else is not important in your life, people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry. You are valuable. It was said about Jesus, all men seek for you. Not some. Not Yoruba people seeking for a Yoruba man. Not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man. Not northern people seeking for a northern man. This is largely what we call value in our world. So if I have value now, I just quickly go and look for my people and say, I'm the son of the soil. Your boy has come with this if you leave me like that. And so we have a crowd of people. It's, it's largely just ethnocultural. But that God puts something in your life, my brothers and my sisters, that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are tested to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what I am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the Holy Spirit would tell me pay attention and let me make you valuable I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying oh today I'm grateful there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable 
I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned, you will live a frustrated life. It's a matter of time. And I'm not talking of business here or a job here. Mm -mm. Leave all those things first. You see, it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you. Many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God. It's not just to help us walk in character. The Holy Ghost of great men. He came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. Listen carefully. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God. No, sir. Is God speaking to us tonight? Value. When your world comes to you, they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have. You are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you. When no amount becomes, that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say, I was stupid for dropping one million. I just came. I know Pastor Alpha is anointed, but ah, ah, one million, what entered me? No. When nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry, you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where God is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole I guarantee you you will not beg for bread I hope God is speaking to you you see I love you that's why I'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions still today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money, finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says, you, are, you, are, you know, and all kinds of things. And God is watching. He's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time. Have you seen families doing devotion in the morning? And the father stops. Say, what, what devotion are you doing? And he picks a scripture by himself. Just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources. And devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel. A lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money. And you see, the truth is that except God shows you the way out, otherwise this thing will press you one day, you will touch what you should not touch. Hello? Please talk to me. Don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man. When you are pressured to a point where you are push to the wall you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make we are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the whether they wanted to give the person a job god is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira before they will get the job. I said, so do you have the money? He said, no. She was, whether, I think it was a she, coming to just say if I can, if God can use me. I said, no, God doesn't use me for those kind of things. God does not use me for those kinds of things. Now, it's easy to criticize them and say, you mean you love God and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat. It's a cause. It's not the will of God. Imagine, for instance, that I tell them to give me a bucket now. And while I'm preaching, 
I just, I just say, if the bucket comes close to you, there's something written on the bucket, just read it and do whatever it says. Look at how your mind, everything I'm saying, will just go down because I'm passing a bucket. You look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say, what is all this again? But do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. Did you hear what I said? The name of Jesus is not a feather you throw. It's heavy. It will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. <laughs> We raise your banner high We shine your light so bright We sing in our of you You will never walk in integrity If you don't have supplies I guarantee you in the name of the Lord You will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value, listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. Just being valuable is not enough. You must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization. This is as simple as it is. That your value must be needed. Listen. Pastor, come. Let's assume you are selling this and I don't need it. Now I'm passing, you have this. I'm just giving an example. Yet I don't need it. Will I reward you? Are you valuable? Is your value useful to me? No. Do I need it? No. So you will still suffer although you are valuable. That's what is happening to many of us. There is almost nobody here that I know who has not recognized something that is valuable. And just because we found it, we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us. No, sir. There is a standard that demands reward. Because the me who is moving around, me too, I'm looking for something with my resources. And until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class. That level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price. Are we together now? So there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing I give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits 
accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called you can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you? Because for every destiny helper, there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you. God can tell me, or God would have put in my spirit to give Pastor Alpha a car, provided he heals my mad child. Are we together? Provided he does what? Not provided he prays in my house. The condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house. So I'm anointed. I know scriptures. And I come to the house. And I roam around and I just pray. And at the end of it, they just thank me. They put malt in a bottle with straw. And they put donut. And they escort me with it outside. And I go. It's not that God did not send them. Your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you. That means when I sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me, God is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen very carefully. Everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today i look at my life today and i see what people do to me and i'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when i was sucking ginger inside a straw and i was a believer Are we together? When I was trekking to First Bank without money in my account by faith, hoping that I would get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price. God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. Then the value will come. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair. They believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact, kingdom impact. And the spirit of God by himself will take their minds to those people and say, that's the man you should bless. Please believe what I'm telling you. Yes. We've had people, my brothers and my sisters, I, I say this to the glory of God. We've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to Koinonia, not for the program travel with seeds 
and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listened to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but there are some of you as you are seated right now, there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now, I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you, but it's the truth. Now, you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man, whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare? Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value for it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of god to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of god because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here 
you would hear testimonies every week that the word produced results nobody leaves what works did you hear what i'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of god is 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 a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love you think i'm just wasting time singing but while i'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and i'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too i'm i'm i'm, I'm doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabaka to Saladash. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. Mm -mm. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been open we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of, upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there. Your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it. Listen, you are seated now in this place. To some of you, you are attending a service. I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders. Some of you travel from far. You just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say, let us pray fire. And you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say, what is this? What is going on here? And everybody descends. They will stop calling you brother immediately. They, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit. Let me tell you this. It's good to know how to cook. It's good to know how to do business. But my brothers and my sisters, be anointed. This is real value. Be anointed. Have something upon you that no man can buy. The same way you can do nothing against the truth. 
but for the truth. He said, Thou anointest my head. Give us that scripture. You did not anoint my cup. The goal is for my cup to run over, but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup. It takes more than a good profession to prosper. It takes more than a good skill to prosper. There is only so much reward you can get from that angle. Ah, but when his hand comes upon you, blessed is the man that my God finds and puts grace upon you. Your life will be a wonder. You will, you will walk upon gold as dust. I'm telling you this. Listen, let me tell you. All these money, money things you see people chase around. Most people don't have any money. They just have enough to solve their basic needs. So they look rich. They are poor. And yet that's what distracts a lot of people. But when you stand say, Lord, put something in my life. Put something upon me. I, I don't know why people don't pray that prayer. Oh. God, shorten my journey. I don't have time. Shorten my journey. Let there be an anointing on my profession. Listen, listen, listen. Come, Emeka, you are a doctor. Come, watch this. We are going to pray. This gentleman is a doctor. When someone is sick, they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever. Now, your profession does not determine who you bless. The anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient. You see now, that one is not MBBS again. That one is the anointing influencing your possibilities. So a day that no doctor is around, the billionaire comes and the Holy Ghost, not your profession, pushes you there. You have a restaurant, you are a chef, congratulations. But not being anointed, you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever. They will finish eating and then back again and say, I don't have 10 naira, I don't have 15 naira. But when the anointing comes upon it, the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here how many public address structures do you have? I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on any social media as a person. It's not everything that is just good preaching. It's not everything that is just... Mm -mm. There is an anointing that announces. It's called an oil of gladness. It can take men and make you above your fellows. Please listen. The financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people I'm not I'm not I'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage There are things when you have, only the rich look for you. There are things when you have, only the poor look for you. There are things when you have, only sick people look for you. There are things you have, only those in need of legal issues look for you. There are things when you have, only hungry people look for you. But there are things when you have, all men will seek for you. All men. All men. God designed it that way. So when Jesus was about to start his ministry, having done everything he did, the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there. 40 days, 40 nights fasting, and he returned in the power 
of the spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the Bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today I I have never been to Shiloh as a person and I was just sitting today and all of a sudden I got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in Shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of God are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this I said what is this now listen I'm just saying it to encourage you I don't know that man from Adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things lord put something upon my life place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings that will answer to the needs of nobles place an anointing upon my degree place an anointing upon my masters place an anointing upon my phd oh god place an anointing upon my profession i am a lawyer but only an educated one can you put an anointing upon my legal practice your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing worshipers pray Lord, I can sing. I have written songs, but let an anointing come upon my song, so called. Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Favor overflows. Thou anointest my head with oil. My career.
area explodes. Thou anointest my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. Lord, let your anointing announce me. Let your anointing announce the gift of God upon my life. Shaka takata. Come on, prayer warriors, pray. Pray like a priest. Embra koto shake it and echo take a second. Embra keto kasana makata. Rekete koto shake it and echo masia. Hallelujah. I'd like you to mention whatever it is that you do, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, and say, Lord, let your anointing and your fire come upon it, and let there be an explosion from the left to the right. Lift your voice and pray. If you are in ministry, pray over the work God has put in your hand. Lord, it's time to take the power, the glory of God to the nations. It's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel. As a businessman, it's time to rob minds with the great. Lift me by your anointing, O God. Your certificate can give you a job. It will take the anointing to rise. I want you to pray a serious prayer. Lord, by the anointing on my life, take away poverty and hardship. Lift your voice and pray. If there is an anointing on my life, then there is a demand for it. Let the anointing of my life roll away financial reproach. Let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply. By the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for men to arise and answer to the cause of my need. Pray God will answer, I tell you. me we are praying there is an anointing that works like perfume Isaac used it and said my son is like a field I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed that means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in Zaria I just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell when the woman broke the alabaster box the Bible says the perfume filled the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name i think is that true 
and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this person I say I knew it I knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something I like you to pray the fragrance of your glory Lord let it smell my life that as I walk my life becomes a walking miracle going to pray two more prayer points I like you to cry and say Lord I am the one who will break the circle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of God is here I sense a strong anointing I like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray of believers that advance granting them the time to serve the purposes of the people they shall be called the repairers of the bridge they shall be called the repairers of the bridge they shall build the waste places they will repair the former desolation shall be called repairers of the bridge, repairers of the bridge, repairers of the bridge, repairers of the bridge. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, tearing down ordinances by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says John was anointed from the womb. Listen. Until that time, they never named anybody John. So they wanted to give him a name, an identity like what was the status quo. But when the angel came, you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord. And the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved. Listen, when you do uncommon things, uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said 
that a notable miracle had happened. Lift your voice. Lord, an unusual prophet, an unusual apostle, an unusual evangelist, an unusual caterer, an unusual chef. Come on, pray. An unusual IT consultant, an unusual doctor, an unusual professor. Dimensions of the workings of the spirit, unusual dimensions. Shabara, unusual dimensions. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he may have prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as I began to grow that I understood that ah, he was not being selfish. He was just saying, Lord, distinguish him. Put him in a level. Let me tell you, Rehoboth means God has given me my space. There is your space in life. That you dig a well, they can come and close it. But there is a space in ministry. There is a space in business. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, allocate my space and keep me there. A space that is beyond competition. Beyond contention. There are names that when you call on earth, there is no basis for comparing them. There are names when you call in ministry, in business, in family life. They are outstanding. They are in a class of their own. Your father God is in a class of his own. Cannot be compared with any other God. Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and I said I did he said yes that you prophesied to me that the wells of worship the fountain will begin to rise and that from that time his life had moved forward and while we were in the meeting the lord spoke to, me, to him again and i told him i said you are going to write just one song one that will surpass what your songs have done again it doesn't take too many things to lift you just one noise by the hand of god there was one earthquake Bang! what did ben carson do to be great just one surgery and that was it when you call all the music ministers in this nation it's usually one song many songs they wrote but one song bishop td jakes wrote one book woman thou art loose till today no other book has brought him that kind of reward dr miles munro had written so many books bestsellers but when he wrote rediscovering the kingdom that one book was a game changer 
please can we borrow one more minute and say lord what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace let it come let it come let it come lift your voice and pray lord what is the one song lord as a man of god what is the one meeting the one meeting that will announce my grace as a doctor who is the one patient that I will treat and get out of poverty forever. One thing is needful. One thing, one thing. Pray, Koinonia. There is a God that answers. One encounter Benny Hinn had with Jesus changed his life. One encounter with Catherine Kuhlman changed his life. One encounter we are still praying, Lord, what is the one thing, the one dimension? Who do I need to prophesy to for my life to change? Whose body must be healed through my hands? What is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life? What is that one publication that the nations will hear? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think it was last year, last year or early this year, I had the privilege of flying with Professor Wole Soinka. And when I got into the aircraft, he was sitting on my seat. And I looked at him. I was standing face to face with a Nobel laureate. Very simple looking. And I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, no, no. You can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of order. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax-free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did, die on the cross, and he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Listen, I know our time is gone, but you are going to cry this one thing. Listen, for some of you, it may not be one thing. It may be one encounter with one person. We have a number of our worshippers here. This young man, Gashina, where is he? He's praying. This gentleman, it was one of his songs just one of his songs that Nathaniel Bassi received one of his songs and this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry hallelujah sometimes you just need one encounter I'm saying this to you I've shared with you my experience with Jesus it's not that I was not doing I was not doing bad I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this but one solid encounter not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs solid encounter where you meet the power of god apostle babalola was roaming around in a forest when fire fell on his head from that forest one encounter and changed his life archbishop benson idahosa it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him bishop oyedeko one encounter an 18 hour vision changed his life papa Ia Deboye, one encounter turned his life around you don't need 10 lord what is the encounter what is the idea what is the song release it cry and say release it call on to me and i will answer one encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation. One encounter with the prophetic grace will open you up to dimension. One conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high.
I stretch my hands and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the fire that must fall on your life to shift you to the next level I stretch my hands receive that fire from heaven now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare where your reward system has become limited may you be upgraded to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ listen I speak to you if you are in ministry here I stretch my hand I'm telling you it's time for men of fire to arise this lukewarm talkative thing around will continue to mock us we need people that know God and can prove his power and his grace this is what will change the society all this grammar up and down will not do much you need to bring God to the Bible says the word became flesh I speak to you the kind of encounters that must put fire in your spirit may that fire fall on you in the name of Jesus any man of God here any minister of the gospel here and those following online you have been begged at a level of result only certain miracles happen only certain results happen in the name of Jesus enter a new dimension a new dimension in the spirit and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the orchestrations that must make you collide with the doors of the next season of your life we declare by the spirit of wisdom may God coordinate those orchestrations and make them happen for you in the name of Jesus listen for some of you this grace will start waking you up in the night you will be surprised that at specific times sleep will leave you not forever but for a period of time because it is through those prayer times that a solid encounter that's when you will see a real angel for the first time not not lying and saying this and that no daniel was praying after 21 days an angel came there are some of you by reason of that prayer god will lead you to certain bookshops you will see an old book that was written by one general nobody knew you will buy that book and sit down and that's when the fire of your destiny will come upon you value encounters don't trivialize them encounters are, are the things that create conviction this our generation doesn't have conviction at all we just say everything and don't believe it He said that which our eyes have seen that which our ears have heard that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that's what we preach I pray for you encounters with Jesus there are some of you here I speak in the name of Jesus may the king of kings himself visibly walk to your rooms in the name of Jesus may God open you up to these encounters you will start having supernatural encounters encounters with the angelic encounters with the spirits of just men encounters with Jesus himself in the name of Jesus Christ For as long as we continue to fool ourselves that our finances are at the mercy of a lot of mundane things the ease factor is the anointing the ease factor is the anointing when all is said and done please get solid power in your life doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry or not
I was in a meeting about a week or so ago and one of the gospel ministers people were ministering and quite honestly I was blessed nothing spectacular but one of the gospel ministers came up and my God for just 10 minutes that gentleman has been a long time long time since I sat down under that corporate that intense presence long time corporately like in a meeting I looked at him I said I know why now I know why this gentleman paid his price when you hold this thing it shows it shows you don't carry the anointing you only carry it so that it will carry you it's the anointing that carries you lift my head oh God let somebody know that a giant can arise from your family there are some of you like Gideon you are your family is the least and you are the least in your family and you are busy hiding this night the Lord is speaking to you what are you doing on the ground Almighty oh, man of valor do you not know who you are in Christ redemption offers us an opportunity to rise and reign like kings are you hearing me he said awake thou that sleepest and Christ will give you life As that reign of glory comes some of you what you need tonight is an upgrade of grace the grace you have is there but you have gotten to the limit of it there are certain dimensions hear me let me tell you something see grace is in levels the bible says he measured a thousand cubits is that true measured another thousand cubits those will open to you according to the degree of grace let me tell you the truth it's not everything that is possible for everybody are you hearing me i told you we are all equal in christ but we are not equal in grace the prophet servant took the rod the same rod went and laid it on the dead body nothing happened is that true but the prophet came and did it see that it is not possible for you does not mean it's not possible in christ but tonight jesus himself the Bible says, and if I be lifted up, tonight we have exalted him with all the worship. Christ is lifted up. You cannot come to his presence and those chains and shackles. And they bound something. Some of us have been bound by limitations, by mindsets. The Bible says, but the hand of the Lord came upon something and that rope became like wax. Like wax. Many of you will shake out of some things this night. Some of you have been thrown into the den of the lion. And people have forgotten about you. But can I tell you something? Your enemies will call your name and you will answer. You will say, I'm alive. I got into that dungeon. But before then, that Shekinah of God that preserves men. You will come out strong. Come out wise. Come out powerful. Come out full of grace and tell them I have a testimony. I know what it means to go to the valley of the shadow of death. But God who can take a man from a dung hill. The Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Tonight many of you will activate breakthroughs. God will connect you. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost gave me a revelation some time ago. He said God is called the father of spirits. Have you ever known the meaning of that name? That means every spirit is subject to him. When the disciples came in Luke, in the book of Luke, they said, they came rejoicing, saying, Master, even the demons were subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, do not just rejoice because the spirits. So he's called the father are you listening to me the chief the captain above every spirit including the spirit of your destiny help us and so if the father of spirits moves he can move any spirit hear me the bible says nebuchadnezzar did not sleep that night he got up by himself he said oh daniel has your god been able to save you may my god reveal himself as the father of spirits over certain families 
Father of spirits. Every spirit. Listen. Habalists understand this principle. They can enter their coven. There's what they call summoning the spirits of people. Is that true? While they are sleeping, they summon your spirit. And the spirit of the person comes to the coven. They are trying to mimic God. God is the lion. Satan roars like the lion. Tonight, God will summon the spirits of men. Let me tell you the truth. And compel them to bless you. Hallelujah. He said, look up to Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bare thee. For I called him out alone. I blessed him and I increased him. I called him alone. This night is not you and your neighbor. I know you are going out together. Just leave that thing for a while now. Are you hearing me? It's not the issue of me and my neighbor or me and my family members. Oh, oh this guy is our neighbor in New Extension. Forget about that thing. I know mother came with father. Bro, forget about that thing. I said, Lord, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go until something in my spirit breaks open. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I'm provoking you to get angry tonight. Because what you are about to lift. Listen. When you watch weightlifters as they lift weights. Before they lift it, you see them shouting. They are getting themselves angry. Well, because when they are angry, an ability they cannot explain comes. This is what I'm doing to you. When I fire your faith, every unbelief that came with your situation, I know you trekked from town to come here, but can I tell you something? God is able to change the story of a man. Tonight, let's see that demonic report that says you will not bear a child let's see that demonic report that says you have fibroid and that you will be pregnant let me tell you the truth my bible tells me god opened the womb of leah god opened the womb of rachel it is god that opens a door that no devil can shut and he can shut a door that no devil can open Revelation 3 verse 8 it said behold I know that you have little strength yet you have kept my word it said behold I set before you I set before you hallelujah we had a very touching testimony over the week of the favor of God hallelujah someone called us and a very professional web designer from Gombe State is the one that he designs for state governments their websites and he just called us he said koinonia messages have been blessing him opening him to dimensions in the spirit he said he has been stepping into new levels in his career and he said please I want to transport myself, foot my bill, lodge myself, and come and build a free website for the ministry. And I want to train the media team on how to maintain it, everything free of charge. How can you explain this? See, listen, listen. I don't say this thing. See, let me tell you something. We tell testimonies because the testimony of Jesus, that means a testimony that was initiated by the spirit of the Christ is a spirit of prophecy meaning it has in itself the ability to compel you to desire it and see it happen in your life hallelujah the testimony of Jesus the spirit of prophecy don't sit down there and say can it happen you are seeing what God, you cannot belong to a ministry that is carrying certain levels of grace and is not working in your life. Get angry this night. Get angry. He said, I and all the children that the Lord has given me, get angry. When they saw the apostle, they said he had been with Jesus. See, listen. 
listen. Let me tell you this night. Don't you ever hear me? Don't you just leave him, leave him. Don't you ever are you hearing me? Try to make Satan make you think there is no hope. That language of there is no hope is of the devil. Some of you are outside. Hear my voice. Because there are many voices speaking. There are some voices telling you you will never marry. Ladies, hear me. Some are saying because you live a past life. Look at how it is in your house. What is your business with what has happened to Mr. ABC? The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Is that true? They fell near you. He said another 10,000 by your right side. He said none shall harm you. Some of you hear me. This night, I'm serious about this marriage thing. We are going to break this devilish yoke. Some of you have been laughing about it. If you don't take it serious this night, you will be surprised. You are just saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't get up and deal with it this night. The Bible says... The whole world lieth in wickedness. Don't let cartoons fool you. This world is not a playground. Are you hearing me? So when it's time to receive, make sure you receive. And the Lord is going to be restoring in this place. You lived a past life. You lost your womb. Who told you God has stopped creating? Read the book of Revelation. He said, for thou was slain and you have received all things. He said, you have created. He said, they, they are and were created. They were created and are still being created. God did not stop creation. He only rested on the seventh day. When he rested on the seventh day, there was no need for recreation. When man spoiled things, he sent Jesus back. Let me tell you something. Remember not the former things. Are you hearing me? Tonight, don't let the devil say, even you, even you, that everybody knows you in your area to be a prostitute. So what? See, this is why when they came to the land of Jericho, because of the prophetic destiny, are you hearing me, of Rahab, he said, kill everything plus the animals so that there will be no trace to our history because she was going to be the great grandmother of Jesus. He said, destroy everything of the past. Tonight, let me tell you something. Everything, whether your mistakes, whether your carelessness of the past, the Bible says, remember not the former things. How many of us are ready to receive tonight? Let me give you a few seconds right now. I'd like you to think on the things you want God to do for you. Please, don't be mechanical about this. We are not doing jamboree this night. Think very well. Know what you want God to do. If his husband, say husband. Don't say a man. If his wife, say wife. If his breakthrough, say Lord, my heavens are short. If it's finances, say finances. If it's your ministry that is dying, no growth, say, oh God, measure a thousand cubits this night. Any area of your life, terminal disease, infections, lump in your breast, cancer, whatever it is, just believe God. Don't say we have been coming I came the last time I did receive. Master, we have told all night, they said. He said, nevertheless, this night, at thy word. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in tongues just for one minute. Exercise your spirit, man. Outside, I'm telling you, I see a cloud outside. A mighty cloud. A mighty cloud the Lord is showing me a silvery cloud outside God will do mighty things outside pray in one minute cry out your expectation to God go ahead forget about your neighbor talk to the Lord say Lord you know that you are my last hope this night you are my last hope in this place if you do not help me there is no help again. If you do not save my family, if you don't change our story, 
then let it be that there is no God but I have no option again pray that demon spirit assaulting your destiny pray enough is enough that yoke of bad luck pray Christ has redeemed you by faith tonight you will enter into the experience Christ has paid the price you don't need to pay it again but it takes faith to enforce that which Christ has done the price has been paid it will not be paid this night that ultimate price yes Lord just a song listen to what you are saying listen to what you are saying your hands everybody inside and outside I truly hail you most high I hail you most high I truly hail hail you Hallelujah. Hear me. The power of God is present in this place mighty. And God is going to be fishing out people and families. Hear me. Some of you will stand in for your family. Every yoke of darkness. Every curse. Every the power of God is already moving every curse outside i want you to get ready because there will be a release of fire hallelujah at the count of three hear me inside and outside at the count of three with all your heart you're going to shout jesus hear me the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in this place in a dramatic way especially outside there will be mighty deliverances for you for your family members every oppression it will bow tonight because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance lift up your hands thank you father take over this meeting right now Holy Spirit Take over this meeting. Take over this meeting. Do mighty things. I give you all the glory. At the count of three, hear me. 
I confront gates. I confront powers in the name that is above all names. Out of the abundance of grace that is sufficient in this house, at the count of three, every devil, I speak from the realm of the spirit and I confront altars by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You will bow at the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. That devil of darkness. Come out. Let God's people go free outside the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. Every act of witchcraft, every act of divination, every act of sorcery. Let the fire fall. I expose every power of darkness right now, right now, right now. Outside, outside, there are angels of deliverance in a mighty way. Bring them out. Outside, outside, there is a baptism of fire. No devil, no devil of darkness will stand tonight. Satan, the Lord will build you. Satan, the Lord will build you. Satan, the Lord will build you. Come on, 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 Oh, there is fire in this place. No devil can stand. No devil against your destiny. No enchantment. No divination against Jacob shall stand. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, this night they will scatter. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands again. Outside. Hallelujah. Hear me. Those of you outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. God is not done with you. Please, pick them and bring them. Many of it will be a mass deliverance. Are you hearing me? Just those outside. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Shetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet
Lord, let no devil, let no devil stand your presence. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It's the baptism of fire. No devil will stand We are in the presence of the Lord Hallelujah. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Some of you are receiving liberty. You don't have to fall and come out. Are you hearing me? But they are just living. Living. See, some of you be checking. We have not prayed for the sick yet. But be checking yourself. You will find out that miracles are already happening. Because some of these sicknesses are orchestrated by devils. Now, Hear me, the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. At the count of three, I speak to all these demons that have oppressed these people as a point of contact. I speak as an ambassador. At the count of three, you will leave them complete deliverance. No hiding. Let the word of God search even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. There be no hiding place. At the count of three, under this apostolic fire at the count of three you will go right now one two three go 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 come out come out come out and return no more come out come out come out and return no more. Come out. Come out. There's no hiding place. Come out. There's fire upon every devil. Fire. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's no hiding place. Listen, as this is happening to you, I want you to know that this is happening in your family too. Are you hearing me? This is the spirit of death in this brother's family. The spirit of death. Right now, thou foul devil, I see you in the spirit. Go, go, come out now. Come out now. Out. Hallelujah. Let me pray for this lady. See, I'm seeing horns. Horns, this is what I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Right now, I make contact with your body by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. 
you are a wicked foul devil of darkness just lay your hands on her head in the name of jesus now come out thou devil of darkness there's no hiding for you in the mighty name of jesus this curse of darkness is gone from this lady hallelujah ulcer if you have ulcer lift your hands anybody ulcer please you're going to be healed now check yourself hallelujah now we'll take some instant testimonies hallelujah we'll take some instant testimonies because of time we usually don't do that but we we'll just to encourage a few people lift your hands inside and outside you're suffering from peptic ulcer it will go now peptic ulcer lift your hands as i rebuke that spirit some of you have wounds those wounds will close up now now not later on just leave them god is not done with them until he's done brother look at me you're a great man but let me tell you you didn't come out for yourself you came out for your family where are you from not where you are coming from. Edo State. Edo State. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is showing me a shrine with seven stones and there's kola knot in the middle. Are you listening to me? So God is setting you free. You believe that? Let me pray for you for your family. Out now! Those altars of darkness be gone forever. Please don't be quick to carry them hallelujah lift your hands ulcers in the name of the lord jesus christ that name that is above every other name ulcers be healed now ulcers be healed now ulcers inside and outside be healed now start checking yourself check yourself miracles are happening god is healing ulcer ulcer check check the moment you see a notable miracle um Maybe we'll have a few, I don't know, maybe at the back, one or two people. The ministers who verify them will take one or two testimonies. The Lord is showing me, who is Hanatu? Hanatu, Hanatu. I'm hearing the name Hanatu. Come now, don't wait there, please. There's no time. Hanatu. Hanatu. God is visiting the family of Hanatu. You are Hanatu? Your name is Hanatu. You. Look at me. God is visiting your family. Are you hearing me? A devil of darkness. Spell and yokes of bondage. Let our family go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is not just delivering the family. God is anointing this young man. God will do mighty things. Take the anointing. You will become a mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. Hallelujah. Sister, this lady, come please quickly open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain I'm hearing the name grace look at me who is grace I'm hearing the name grace your friend your church member we need to pray for grace because death wants to take her life are you hearing me grace that's i'm just flowing as the holy spirit is helping me but then the lord is going to visit you in three things see listen to me number one i the lord always shows me these things because i'm seeing marital issue are you married, no, sir. Are you married? do you know me have i met with you the lord wants to solve that issue right now because you're looking pretty on the outside are you hearing me but i'm seeing shadow that's the only thing i'm seeing as your face in the spirit there is no form just shadow but the lord is going to set you free number two who is doing a building project me a building did you tell me this is the second thing god is going to do supernatural grace to complete the building project are you listening to me number three god is blessing you in the area of business i'm hearing business who does business are you sure? Don't just say yes. So are you very sure? Shoes and bags. 
Okay, you are going to see an escalation in your business. Three th these three things. Hold my hands. Father, that yoke of bondage, I break her free from it right now. Ah, what is this thing that I'm seeing again? Do you know what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing a woman. I'm seeing a man. See, don't feel embarrassed. Who comes to oppress you in the night? You have those kind of experiences. This is the man I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Let her go. She must be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what is stopping this marriage. I set you free. You will experience the hand of God, the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beatrice, your son name is Beatrice. Your son name is Beatrice. Beatrice. Your son name is Beatrice. Please, let's hurry up. Your son name is Beatrice. When you have that person, please let him come out. Hallelujah. Now, if you have problem with your ears, please, we have to be fast. Ears, whether one side, or if you came with anybody inside and outside, you came with anybody that is partially or completely deaf, please put your hands there right now. Put your hands right there. Some of you feel like water in your ears. Just put your hands. Please, as you are receiving miracles, some of you are not mentioning your case. Just walk out, Bishop Stan and Pastor Jakes are outside. Take the courage to walk out now. Go and drop your testimony. Hallelujah. We are going to take one or two of them. The ministers are at the back. Hallelujah. They are standing. Even if the miracle has started, they will perfect it. Look at me. Come. See. Brother, come. Where were you sitting? Outside. At the back. Hold on. What happened to you? Coming here for like very well, but I've not felt anything, so I opened up my heart. And what happened? What happened? That's the question. Body vibrating. Huh? See, the Lord Jesus, because even now God has not finished. One of the things God is calling you, it will be a time of preparation, but God is calling you. You're going to be a great teacher of the word. Are you hearing me? He will teach the word very prophetically. Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Spirit of revelation. My God, I pray. The eye is the light of the body. Let something happen to this brother. Let there be a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I impart upon you. Just look at my eyes. You're receiving a mighty impartation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go outside. God is visiting people. I'm seeing some, someone healed. Lump in the breast. Lump in the breast is getting healed right now. Right now. The moment it is your case, celebrate God. Check it and go out. Celebrate it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is a outside. A lady is healed. Lump in the breast. Your right breast. Outside. There's healing going on right now. A lump in the breast. Outside. A lady is being healed lump in the breast is going hallelujah now blood disease blood disease i want to pray for blood disease whether hepatitis hepatitis is killing people like chickens right now whether it is hepatitis hiv aside from genotypes we'll pray for genotypes differently hallelujah but any other blood disease please lift your hands quickly quickly please lift your hands want to rebuke that devil thank you Jesus thank you Jesus if you are lifting your hands lift it because the power of God will come upon you right now in the name of Jesus I pray blood disease be healed be healed right now inside and outside be healed HIV virus die now in the name of Jesus sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia die right now please can we get another mic hallelujah 
Okay, let's just take one. Hallelujah. So, so um, this lady had been suffering from asthma for a long time and also, sorry, for a long time and she said she couldn't shout and in fact, right now she's lost her voice. Hallelujah. Because God healed her wife standing outside. The moment man of God said that people with ulcer, God is touching them right now. God touched her and she was healed. She began to shout and she's lost her voice. Hallelujah. Can you shout for us? Shout. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, as more miracles are happening, don't just come out here to testify, please. Now, I want to pray for a woman. You came, you have pains. It's, it's an elderly woman. Something, I don't know if it's a growth or something. Please, who is that? Please and please, let's save time. God is healing people right now. And then I'm seeing, watch this. This part, you're feeling sometimes you walk and it's almost like you want to fall. Your bone here, come out. You're a lady. You're a lady. God is showing me. The lady is holding a baby. This is what I'm seeing. You are holding a baby. Whether it's your child, who is that, please? Holding a baby, oh. You are holding a baby. Where is the baby? Was she holding a baby? Because, come. Open the floodgates of heaven. Where is, where is the pain? This is the baby. This is the baby. Come, madam. You will be healed right now. Look at me. You, you can see her limping. Who can see her limping? Can you see her limping? Can you see her limping? Madam, hold my hands. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Lay your hands on her. Which of them? Which of them? Where's the pain? What happened? Just like that. That devil will leave you right now. Because there is a name. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come. March your legs. Go ahead. Go ahead. March. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Is there any pain? Are you feeling any pain? Just a little. Go ahead. Just march in the name of Jesus Christ. Now check it. Walk. Walk and come. Walk and come. Jump. Look at. Look at this. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Open the heavens. Let it rain. Let it rain. is ministering to me just leave her five months you are a lady here you have not seen your period for five months five months you have not seen your period you've shared it with a few friends right now this night this night i know there are lady ushers they'll help you hallelujah all kinds of menstrual issues it will disappear it will disappear right now open the floodgates of heaven as soon as i pray for you take her to the restroom you will check yourself right now right now that yoke of bondage be free now by the power of the holy ghost there's the fire of the holy ghost please take her please take her so she doesn't feel embarrassed she's not the only one there will be miracles there are more miracles coming celebrate jesus christ please can we have another mic so that pastor jakes is there another mic okay it's here please just go to the back Go to the back. Yes. Hallelujah. This brother's name is Dennis. 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 And while standing here, when the man of God said, she lift up her hands, and those that had ulcers, she lift up your hands. God is healing ulcer. She actually had ulcer, and it translated into asthma. Hallelujah. And while lifting up his hands, what happened? Praise the Lord. This is my first time to come here, and it led to asthmatic. Hallelujah. As the man of God says, like if you have as uh, if you have ulcer, and I believe he's going to he's going to be healed. 
and as I lift up my hand, I'm having chest, chest pain. Hallelujah. But now I'm not feeling anything. It's just as cool as... Breathe, as breathe as in and out. Breathe in and out. Go Hallelujah. ahead. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. In and out. Any problem. No problem. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. My grain headache has just been healed. My grain headache has been healed now. My grain headache. Please check yourself. My grain headache. My grain headache has been healed. Make sure you just rush down to the back. My grain headache. Thank you, Jesus Christ. My grain headache has been healed. Now, please listen. There's someone you wake up in the morning. Your heart area here. Your heart area pains you. It's as if your heart is tearing. When you wake up early in the morning. This thing has been happening for a long time. Who is that person? Your heart. Just, just this. You cannot even sleep on that side. Because when you rest on that side, you have serious problem. This is not the only one. I'm seeing a lady. You're a young lady. You're a young lady. Open the floodgates. Mama, do, does she understand English? Who brought her? Mama? Okay. What? Selena is a official outside interpreter. Ask her what's wrong with her. Make it out, Mama. Her hand and her legs. Her hand. Everything. This is, see, the devil once is supposed to be from her head down. This is stroke. Are you seeing? This is stroke that the devil wants to bring. Tell her right now she will, she's going to be healed and she will dance. Miracles. Look at the lady who just came. Hallelujah. You need to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While standing here worshiping God, she said she's had menstrual pain for a long, long time. Hallelujah. The pain had been there and while Apostle ministered to her, something remarkable happened. You want to hear? Hallelujah. Please, we need a lady to touch her stomach. She said before she were pains, so we need somebody to verify. Now the pains are gone. Yes. The pains are gone. Any pain? Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Check yourself. Don't just stand waiting. Check yourself. God is doing miracles. Even if you're outside, just Bishop and Pastor Jakes are at the back. Mama, tell her. God is going to heal her right now. Ask her, does she believe? Tell her to hold my hands. The Lord Jesus sets you free. That devil, gone, pain, gone, come up. Tell her to come up and march. It's gone. It's gone. Look at this. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Hold on. How does she feel? Is this still is the pain still there? She's not feeling any pain. Mama, let's match. Can you dance? Play any song for her. Look at look at somebody who could not stand well. What kind of song do they sing? You, you people should learn Alsa songs for our mothers. You could don't know one house song. Annie, give us one house song. Come on, dance, celebrate Jesus.
Give God a shout of praise. Hey. Hallelujah. God is doing a miracle outside. A hole in the teeth has been closed outside. A hole in the teeth. Check yourself. A hole in the teeth. A hole in the teeth it has been paining you check you find out it has is gone right now right now the lord is showing me a hole in the teeth is closed the hole is closed completely please make sure you verify before coming okay i've been having this great pain on my okay repain my heart each and every moment when i wake up in the morning it's like it shifts and it aches really This moment, while I was standing right here, when this woman just received her healing, I felt it just happened immediately. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are healed, just walk right at the back. The Lord is showing me another miracle. One eye, the left eye of somebody outside. God is really visiting people outside. The left eye, you don't see well with it. There's, you see like an image intercepting your eye. is gone right now. Please check it. What was she? Okay, lay your hands there. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Gone. Check yourself. See, the anointing does not just come. Check yourself. Please don't, don't feel embarrassed to say you have to say yes. No. If it doesn't happen, say it. We'll pray for you here. Check yourself. Check yourself very well. Do what you couldn't do. Can you? any pain i'm still waiting for the lady someone the, i think the did i say left or right now breast lump breast lump is gone is gone check it don't don't wait check check and go outside pastor jakes is there they are busy verifying people's cases inside or outside hallelujah praise the lord now um this is very interesting there's a family here that has been suffering delay and God is going to solve the problem in a very dramatic way. Wait, 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 listen. The power of God is going to carry the person from where he is. The person will run out here with such speed. This is a sign that this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. This is what the sign that God gave me. This is very interesting. The way the Holy Spirit walks sign and wonders here. From outside, from outside, the power of God will pick the person. He will run with the spirit of Elijah. It's from outside. Lord, let it happen according to your word. I give you praise and I give you glory. You will come out under a tremendous influence of the spirit. It's a sign that this is what God is doing. Please, let's continue before the person comes out. You will come out, certainly. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I'm seeing a baby that is sick. You came with a baby that is sick. Please, who is the person? The baby cries in the night. Please hurry up quickly. Because Pastor Jakes will still come up here and Bishop Sam. Ah, whatever mountain will not has not answered to it will answer to you this night. Who is this? This is the baby that is sick. What's wrong with her? In 2000. Open the floodgates of heaven. 2003, she was sick, so we took her to the hospital and they transfused her. After then, she was. One more person again, this same experience for one more person outside. One more person outside is going to happen again. One more person by the power and the influence of the Spirit. This is a sign and a wonder. God is restoring delay in families the power of god will just pick you from the crowd and bring you here with tremendous speed let's listen they transfuse her and after 
what did they say is wrong with her? The doctor confirmed that she has HIV. With the transfusion of blood, she has HIV. That's what the doctor confirmed. That what? HIV positive. That devil is a liar. Come, my dear. Look at me. What's her name? How can a girl bear the name Favor and still have HIV? You see how demonic Satan is? The Bible says a man was sitting at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. A lady, this is like Jabez, but tonight like the prayer of Jabez, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. You will go and test her. You will come back with a testimony. We will change it. HIV is a spirit. And it will bow. Sweetheart, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Yeah. Just leave her. And test her. She's free. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open? There's another mighty miracle. Another mighty miracle. I tell you, God is doing wonders in this place tonight. Listen. Hallelujah. Apostles, this is amazing. Listen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the word of knowledge you gave about a woman, a lady outside with the, with the lump. Lump. The lady with the lump. Listen. How, okay, how long has it been? Please help us. Mm, for like three. How long? Three years. Right now. It's gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. Lord, let your power come upon her. You will perfect this right now. That which you have started, let it be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things. So if your miracle has started, Bishop is praying. Jake, they are praying. We are very serious. Don't go back. Don't go back. A wrist has just been healed feel a pain in fact there used to be like a growth check it it has disappeared check it right now it has disappeared check it it has disappeared check it god is doing mighty miracles check it it has disappeared hallelujah now i'm seeing a woman there are objects that move in your body serious objects it moves sometimes to your legs sometimes to your chest hallelujah right now as i pray you are going to be free and you find out that you are free you are feeling light please when that happens to you go down the ministers are seriously praying there father in the name of jesus this demonic thing this demonic thing this demonic yoke of darkness let it leave your body right now right now right now right now come my sister What's your name? Grace. Grace. When I was speaking to a lady here and I said, Grace, I was, my eyes was being fixed. Are you married? We are going to visit marriage issues now. Just get ready. We are going to deal ruthlessly with that devil. Are you hearing me? Marriage is a good thing. Say it. Again. Say it one more time. Every good and perfect gift. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? That means every bad and imperfect gift comes from where? I tell you the truth. God is going to visit marriages right now. Look at me. Men don't come to you. Anybody that comes, they just mock you. They run away. They do all of these things. Some even insult you. Can I tell you something? You are wonderfully and fearfully made. I hope you know that God does mighty marriage miracles in this place. So when we are talking about marriage, look at another miracles are happening like 
I tell you there is an open heaven and this is what happens once there is praise please make sure the, the mic is set let's take this testimony yes sir come sister hallelujah apostle when you gave a word for the woman you said somebody's something was moving in movement her. in her body yes, exactly she's this person. is the person she movement she had an accident some days ago and since then she's been having funny movement movement in, in your body even standing here in the meeting she was still having that any movement right now in your body lay your hands on your on your stomach no not on your stomach not your legs thank you jesus christ Amen, sir. jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus You're free, completely free. Give Jesus a big sister. I'm going to put, look at me. What are you doing? You are a teacher. Yes, sir. Kalonkuda. Eh? Kalonkuda. Government secondary school. I'm going to pray for you. Why don't they like you? What is all this thing I'm saying? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. Do you know me? Did we discuss this? Because I'm seeing real hatred. They hate this woman. Eh? I'm seeing Chuck. Chuck, you are a teacher. What are you teaching? The whole class. Okay, you promise me they teach everything. Oh, okay. Let me pray for you. Look at me. That devil is a liar and you should settle down. Do you believe me? This one is oppression. No, this one is not just. Let her go. That wicked, foul devil of darkness. Let her go now. Let her go. Come out of her right now. Let her go. Thou devil of darkness. Release her right now. With a mighty shout. Go. Go. If there is a woman here, you've suffered barrenness or a man, anything that you have not given birth, come out here quickly. Please, quickly, quickly. Bishop is still coming and Jakes, we have to hurry up. There's a big that will happen here. Please, come out quickly. You, you must be married though, except if you are standing for somebody. Don't be emotional about it, please, please. Be looking at your neighbor. If you are from the same place, go back. Somebody has come to represent another person. We will have miracle children in this place. Look at, look how many people the devil is stopping them from enjoying. I mean, some of them are standing in for their loved ones. Look at, look at this, look at this. It looks like they are coming out to give offering. But this is, this is lack of, lack of children you see the relevance of meetings like this listen to me who is standing for herself or for himself for yourself for yourself come here please quickly those who are standing for others this way for yourself look at me are you together She's your wife. Oh, both of you are standing for yourself. Where's your husband? He traveled. I'm seeing a baby girl. Go and write it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. See, let me tell you. Sister, look at me. You will come back here with your baby girl and testify. You believe that? Lord, confirm your word with power right now. Thank you, Jesus. You are set free. You're on his marriage. Why didn't you wait? The guy just said, okay. No, 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 no. Don't see, don't laugh. It doesn't mean you should do it anyway, but don't laugh. It's coming out. Look at me. You believe that there is supernatural grace for marriage here? Yeah? When when are you when is the wedding? Eh? Hold my hands. According to the time of life, I speak to you under the unction of the spirit. Before the end of this month, you will be in a very godly, serious relationship 
with a serious lady that is virtuous and love God. Father of spirits, connect them. You are the father of spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Wow, mighty miracles again are happening. You too, you for yourself, lay your hands on your stomach. Because I'm seeing something else. What did the doctor say? PIV. What? PIV. Whatever that means. Well, we shall know this is not from God, whatever it is. PID, PID. We'll pray, whatever it is. And see, look at me. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. At least the men don't understand. Some of them, but the ladies, you understand what she said, Abby? Do you understand or not? We are going to pray. Look at me. It will go and you will give birth to a lot of children. What will stop you is discipline, not lack of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I wish your husband were here oh, because he's not only you I'm supposed to pray for. Where is he? Just pray for him. Thank you, Jesus. Just lay your hands there. Father, perfect her. The power of God is coming upon you. And that devilish thing is leaving you right now. Return with testimonies. Return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let's hear Pastor Jakes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle, when you give the word for somebody outside that God was feeling the person's teeth. Feeling the person's teeth. How many of you remember? Two this of her teeth. Two of her teeth. Had been removed. Can you open your mouth? Don't feel embarrassed. Two of her teeth has been removed. Look at sorry i this is bad viewers discretion i'm sorry don't feel bad we are disciplined people but just so that we we'll celebrate god check no hole look at this no hole i can't see any hole here there was your teeth was removed two teeth two teeth was removed who knows her who knows her is it true that the teeth was removed who is that yes yes it's, it's true you are sure of that Dorcas. her name is Dorcas. Look at, and the teeth has been filled supernaturally. Give Jesus a big, Hallelujah. big hand, big hand, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Now, all of you that are standing for any, see, if you are standing for anybody, when you go back, send the person a text and say, I just stood in for you. Now, believe and receive. Are you hearing me? Send them a text. Don't let them roam around. You are here suffering to stand in for them. They are not connecting again. Hallelujah. And because you are standing here, it's impossible for you to face anything called barrenness. I hope you know that. The Bible says, and when Job prayed for his friends, God turned his own captivity. Job 42 verse 10 and 11. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Look at as many people. Lift your hands. Some of you, the power of God will come upon you on behalf of the people there my god children the bible says are a heritage from the lord and father you have made this place an apostolic ground in this city where there are tangible proofs evidences that jesus is alive right now i pray according to the measure of grace every yoke of bondage hear me every curse every fibroid low spam count every devil of darkness that is responsible for impotency or barrenness be lifted now in the name of Jesus be lifted now in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming upon some of you on behalf of your family members I release miracle children. I release miracle children. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. On behalf of those you are standing for, they will come back rejoicing, testifying. Every spirit of darkness responsible for unfruitfulness. If they don't have womb, we create new wombs now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
return back rejoicing send them a text that they have been prayed for and let me tell you see listen hold on hold on there are some who take in but lose the child is that true lift your hands on behalf of them because some is not that they don't take in they take in one month two months they just wake up in the morning and they just see blood that devil is a liar are you hearing me tonight is miracle service my god i pray the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that started this work that same hand will perfect it i pray no more miscarriage in the name of jesus everyone standing here return with dramatic testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please go back rejoicing god bless you hallelujah pastor jakes bishop stand please come please come they'll just be ministering to you in a few minutes hallelujah I know that there are areas that they will minister to you while that is happening pass the prayer request please this is a time for God to visit your case please as you are passing it be praying in tongues as you are passing it be praying in tongues say Lord this is it my time has come if they didn't call you your prayer point will call your case now hallelujah God bless you sir pastor Jake so just minister by the grace of God and then Bishop Stan sir Please write your prayer request quickly. Open the flood gates of trusting the Lord for and Lord communicates to me for some of you especially God will touch you hmm. God's going to be touching some of you especially what you've desired from him specifically so some of you God is going to be activating some anointing upon your life an unusual kind of anointing hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. I'm sensing it being poured on somebody's head. There are people, the Lord will be pouring it upon your head. Parido, fine dangro, sticky vantahi, lingro, supra, tika, tareboste, randakai. One of you, the anointing will be so heavy on your leg. Heavy, heavy. They will literally have to carry you out of this place. <laughs> they will literally have to carry you out of this place. Blessings, blessings, God is blessing some people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessings, God is blessing you. Please, those of you that are serving presently, like leaders in fellowship, just lift up your hands. Specifically, those ones. The Lord wants to reward you. God will touch you. He will reward you. God will reward you right now. Those of you serving, the Lord will reward you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you. The Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord will surprise you. Thank you, Jesus. Please, that person, it's a, it's your pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having unusual stomach pains. Your pancreas. I think pancreas should be in stomach, right? Pancreas, pancreas, pancreas. That's why I hear pancreas. 
Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having that problem. Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing. Let healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your body. Healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, healing comes to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is going to be touching some people's eyes and you begin to have visionary experiences. The Lord is going to be touching. You feel like fire in your eyes as I pray with you right now. You feel like fire in your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. You begin to have visionary experiences. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the wind of God touch your eyes. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. The wind of God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the wind of God touches your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While Apostle was ministering, God told me about somebody amongst us, and I don't know, there might be more than one. Um, the devil gives you food to eat in the dream. And when you're done eating that food, you become heavy. I don't mean physically, spiritually. Let me clear this. It's possible for God to do an impactation for you. It's possible for God to do an impactation for you in the dream by giving you food, angel's bread. It's a spiritual one. But this one I'm talking about, the devil ministers it to you in the dream. And when you are done eating it, you wake up and feel less spiritual. You feel this heaviness upon your body and upon your spirit. If you are the one, I would like to pray with you. She's one of them. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus name go in the name of Jesus go thank you father I thank you in the name of Jesus you are free in the name of Jesus you are delivered in the name of Jesus you are free in Jesus name thank you father I declare freedom freedom in the name of Jesus you are free in Jesus name thank you Jesus he will minister to you who dropped this picture what happened to the baby is dead the baby was born crippled that devil is a liar what did they say No socket. This baby will stand and will walk. Let me tell you, if your prayer request gets here, it will be answered. Let me pray for marriages. Lift your hands before I pray for this. Those three things and we'll be done. Marriages. Hallelujah. The Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children will surround your table. Remember, we always share the scripture here. Please make sure you really lift your hands. Please lift inside and outside. I pray right now. Especially for those that have exceeded the normal time. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? The normal time that should happen. You are a man. You can't get a decent lady that is ready to settle down with you. And now as I'm praying this prayer, hear me. God is going to visit people. But some of you, if you know that you are not walking according to the ways of the Lord, stop it this night. Praise God. You can't be sleeping around 
hopping around from man to man one army officer to another one one banker to another one and then say i don't have a husband no no the bible says come out from among them and be ye separate we are a holy people here and holiness is a big deal hallelujah praise the lord so as you are lifting up your hands make sure that you are making a commitment no sex before marriage don't let anybody deceive you i'm saying it straight to the point hallelujah no sex before marriage no caressing no all this nonsense that people do no don't don't open up yourself for demons you tie your soul with demonic things be sure that you are going to keep many christian relationships are not pure because a lot of people think everybody is doing it no not everybody is doing it who shall ascend to the hill of the lord who shall stand upon his own so sister just get it straight don't say yes to any brother who plans to just if he does not have enough patience to honor you and wait whatever is pursuing him let him carry it out of your life hallelujah i need to say this before i pray for you god is not a magician are you listening to me this is not a herbal center this is a place where miracles happen by definite kingdom principles hallelujah so make sure as you are standing here to receive you are serious with god and you've been involved in all these things i'm talking about stop it this night stop it this night hallelujah lift your hands let me pray for you lift your hands father you put this as an apostolic platform to help and to build people and to terminate the works of darkness and father this night i pray for your people inside and outside and our online community i declare every yoke of marital delay right now by the fire of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost be free from it now be free from it now anyone here who is of a marriageable age right now we connect you to your life partner in the name of jesus and i pray that anyone here who is under any yoke because there are some of you it's not just you all the ladies in your house some you notice that you marry almost at age 40. no matter what you do no matter how decent you are you will never just get a faithful man some of you is married men that keep chasing you as young as you are you can't get a godly brother you are coming to church you are serving in church the brothers are looking at you as if they are looking at this speaker and then it's only a married man with children that are old enough to be your age who will be disturbing you that yoke of bondage this night kapoto sheka repato telebata aparato koposobata let that yoke be broken in the name of jesus let that yoke be broken i release you into your marital destiny i release you sisters i release you sisters i release you brothers i release you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord now please is this all the prayer requests in one minute we are going to pray and then there are three areas three more areas i need to speak finance breakthrough this is very important please keep your spirit open if possible just be praying in tongues let me invite the ministers pastor williams please come bishop come we are going to pray pastor williams is going to lead us hallelujah let me tell you something as the servant of god is speaking on this thing and as we are agreeing i want you to this is not a ritual don't take it as a ritual the scriptural revelation behind this for those of you who are just coming the bible says how that listen 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 hezekiah took the threat letter are you listening to me a threat letter was written and the bible says he took it to the altar and dropped it before god when hannah needed a miracle the bible says she came to the altar are you hearing me this is the revelation behind this we don't do anything without revelation so i want you to connect everybody rise up and stretch your hands 
Just stretch your hands towards this stage, please. Those outside, just stretch it towards your screen. And begin to pray in tongues. Shake up a catabaladaba. Rakatata paka prokoto baladaba. Setala brakata satalibe. Le kalumis ebrakata satalaba. Zebra de kodosh ina satala brakata shi. E kaka satala bratishi. Zebre vina kalazumi na katashia. Rapata shadoli brate kalabalush taba. Ke zebro de kata kata pakata satalaba. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Jehovah. Father of all spirits, the great I am. Mayida subi grolis in amakata sata. Liza pata shekabara. The one that divided the Red Sea. Lika zipra te shetebara. The one that released manna. Paul released manna from heaven. Jehovah, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, I pray for miracles. Miracles. Miracles upon this prayer request. Miracles, visitations, miracles, visitation, far above, far above what they have written, far above, far above, connection, completion, perfections, in the name of Jesus, completions, perfections, in the name of Jesus, miracles, miracles, visitation, divine visitation, Jehovah, Jehovah, Miracle worker upon this request, breathe upon it, breathe upon it, breathe upon it. Let there be miracles. Let your people testify in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a prosperous ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are a prosperous ministry. Mysteriously prosperous. By the hand of God. I believe in prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe you cannot truly represent the government of heaven with poverty. You cannot help the poor by being one of them. Are you hearing me? And I want to pray for you. Please believe. Lift your hands. See, listen. The irrefutable laws of prosperity remains tithing, kingdom investments, and your givings. They open the heaven and position you. And then the blessings begin to come through divine ideas favor wisdom the blessings of god upon your hands strength and long life hallelujah i want to encourage everybody please bring out a seed i can't pray for you for prosperity just like that please please this if you don't have a revelation of what we are doing just keep your seat please this is not so i won't help you let me tell you the truth I'm not going to help you. It's not just about saying receive. No. Please. God has blessed you. You can help somebody by your side. Please. Please. Bring out something that will cost you. Some of you are greedy and stingy. See, let me tell you something. I pray for you that giving grace will be part of your life. Many of you think God is out to rob. You can't outgive God. Hallelujah. The secret of prosperity is giving. It will never change. There are many of you, God has been speaking to you. You won't listen. I can't tell you how many times God has instructed me to empty my accounts. If you see, if your heart is still on prosperity, God will never give you. He said, my son, give me your heart. 
until you conquer greed you are not entitled to handle true riches are you hearing what i'm saying please bring out a seed some of you will bring out something that will cost you let me tell you don't pity yourself don't pity yourself at all don't make foolish impulsive decisions are you hearing me we are not manipulating people don't make stupid decisions that you come outside and no no make some of you god is speaking to you right now some of you need to stand for your families honestly honestly see if the ministry is blessed and you are not blessed it means we are fake something is wrong are you hearing me i tell you this this prosperity oil there is an oil it will come upon some of you in a fearful way please inside and outside i beg you if you don't have a seed can you hold the hands of somebody who has a seed please connect allow the person to hold your hands don't feel bad please stand up everybody this is a very serious thing lift your hands and lift your seed hear me solomon there was a sacrifice upon the altar and solomon said oh god oh god attend unto your people whenever they call you that you will respond and the bible says the glory the shekinah of god came and filled that room. i'm praying i'm praying see i tell you it 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 pains my heart it pains we want to the full gospel you must represent the kingdom in its entirety we don't just want you to be anointed and be begging and be sleeping with men for money no are you hearing what i'm saying please lift some of you what will come upon you is the giving grace because honestly for some of you is greed greed even to yourself lift it up i want to pray oh god has given us this anointing and i want to pray my god it will happen it's going to come on like fire it will fall on many of you please help me my god i pray the oil of prosperity the power to get wealth at the count of three my god let it fall mightily right now one two three take it take it take it take it take it i activate it outside i activate it let fire come upon your sin i give your sin a voice in the spirit he took a sacrifice to put your family in poverty we use this sacrifice to bring them out of poverty it took a sacrifice to enter a covenant of poverty we take this seed and bring you into the realm of blessing psalm 66 verse 12 he said thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through waters and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place my god you know we are not fake we are not just trying to do religious jamboree to take money from people i pray my god i give your seed a voice and i instruct it go around the earth gather your kind and return back to the owner i prophesy under this apostolic unction i speak to your seed go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind and return a hundredfold hallelujah please cast your seeds with joy quickly help me please bring the offering basket hallelujah now i want to pray finally before the altar call breakthroughs there are families that need major breakthroughs are you hearing me there are some of you your the way from the day they gave birth to you 
you have never celebrated entering a house that God gave your own family embarrassment after embarrassment every time they start a building project rain will wash it or something satanic will happen breakthrough is when the limitations that are stopping you are taken away lift your hands the bible says thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left thou shalt break forth please receive it some of you need to call your loved ones and say look a prayer was prayed there are some houses that have been built 10 years 10 years is a cost it's a cost i'm telling you there are some people they are they are lecturers but they are still begging for money to feed this is this is the yoke of bondage there are families that live from hand to mouth some of you as you are looking at me now you are the ones who are the breadwinners of your entire family as young as you are it ought not to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance not taken from his children's children lift your hands please where is the god that brings breakthrough where is that god that changed the story of samaria by the mouth of the prophet where is that god that instructed the prophet to say by this time my god and my king i pray for koinonia in the name of jesus let this breaker anointing like the angel of death in the days of moses let this breakthrough anointing begin to go from house to house house to house house to house we send it to abuja we send it to saria we send it to Kogi state we send it to lagos we send it to kaduna like the angel of death visited his homes this night this night this night i speak this night let this anointing go to families and create the garden of eden let it create the garden of eden hallelujah hallelujah how many of you have noticed the sudden death of professors how many of you have noticed it have you seen the way lecturers are dying like chickens how many of you know it's not normal see the bible says they know not you do not know what is happening this night this night the angel of the lord will move across abu are you hearing me altars of darkness will be destroyed see this is why god put centers like this to legislate on behalf of territories the apostolic grace is not for making mouth is for taking charge is a rule down in the midst of your enemies the church is the light of the world the church cannot be here and things are happening if your father is a lecturer or you live with a lecturer i want you to lift your hands we want to prophesy that oil of exemption hallelujah it's terrible people are afraid right now because nobody knows who is next i pray for you see when the angel of death hear me when the angel of death came to goshen and egypt the angel of death killed everybody it's just that when he came he found out that some houses were already killed when he saw blood on their house he said these people are already died and he passed by i pray that blood of sprinkling that blood he said when i see the blood rapato koparatata not by accident not by terrorism in the name of the lord jesus i command supernatural preservation receive it now supernatural preservation receive it now every lecturer in APU and in all the institutions in this town because I already see the arrows of death on some lecturers the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing that between now 
and December 4 I see four other professors going but we stop it we change it in the name of Jesus we stop it we change it we stop it we change it we stop it he said the heaven of heavens the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord but the earth has he given now let me pray for you 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 have no covenant with death we are entering the ember months now hallelujah please see take seriously the things that happen here are you hearing me liver is the power of God that is bringing her upstage it's a sign and a wonder just cover her hallelujah please we're out of time I want to pray for you lift your hands see listen hear me those inside and outside never believe hear me please now and I don't want you to feel bad I know that there are a lot of people here that have had to lose loved ones we've stood by you but don't let the death of your loved one suddenly make you give room for Satan and say he can ride into your family anytime are you hearing what I'm saying every time death is ravaging people God will summon the people and anoint men to lift up a cry I want to pray for you ember month is the time when people look at how many people just graduate from abu going back they die don't tell me that's the will of god some of you as they are giving your parents work that's it if there is a shrine there is a greater shrine see this is the speaking of altars every altar speak us that the blood of Jesus speak get better things I want to speak on behalf of people lift your hands please because many of us travel there are some of us who are in business you travel to Lagos you travel to Kotono some of you are moving around some of you are coming from different places my Duguri Joss Bauchi come out of her now out out of her now a very violent spirit lift your hands say after me father in the name of Jesus I declare that I am protected from the arrows that fly by day and the noisome pestilence I declare that throughout this year I have no covenant with the spirit of death say death hear my voice I am an ambassador and in the name of Jesus the seal of the blood is upon me I am protected my family members are protected father in the name of Jesus I believe your word and I declare that I enjoy supernatural preservation in my going out and in my coming in say in my going out and in my coming in therefore I pray for you that as you have declared let your eyes live to see the experience in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah you've not given your heart to Jesus please remain standing everyone here please remain standing hallelujah you have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ this is a family this is where we are ready to introduce you to the love of your life the Bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away many of us have been struggling you've been struggling some of you are born again you've given your heart to the Lord truly 
but there are encumbrances pushing you away from God right now please everybody stand I know you've been standing please stand for one last time inside and outside let's honor God and let's honor the greatest miracle that is about to happen young and old rich or poor as you hear my voice the Holy Ghost is going to be talking to some of you and he's going to tell you it is time the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart you've never given your heart to the Lord or you have found yourself derailing I don't care what you have done there is a home for you tonight as everybody begins to appreciate them I want you to leave your seat and come out right now everybody come out from outside God bless you outside sister brother don't sit back people are coming thank you Jesus thank you Jesus don't sit back don't wait for somebody to come please keep clapping koinonia no devil will stop you God bless you sir God bless you they are coming please appreciate them don't sit back there are a lot of you outside God is speaking to you brothers God is speaking to a lot of brothers outside don't let your friends stop you don't let your friends stop you keep coming keep coming thank God for the harvest keep coming keep coming shake it take it the devil that will stop you from being saved has been defeated keep coming Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 